back to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Liberals and anti-Trumpers are freaking out after neighbors of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito say he flew the upside down American flag outside his house right around January 2021, which was at the height of the Stop the Steal movement. Here's some of the commentary from MSNBC. My reaction is there is absolutely no way that Justice Alito can sit in judgment on the two cases where Donald Trump's interests and the insurrection itself is directly involved. He has disgracefully and shamefully displayed the flag in utter disrespect, but even more, he has shown his bias when it comes to those cases. In another era, there would be absolutely no question about the need to question his resignation. But this court has been so disrespectful of basic standards of decency that it may well kind of be taken for granted. Part of the problem is the Supreme Court bar. They should be making motions to recuse these people. Those people who have been on the wrong side of 6-3 decisions while well, these guys have sat on the court should be asking for a rehearing. Judges who who did not abide by their oath, who have cl plainly repudiated the Constitution, decided these cases. So the Supreme Court bar has to get into this. And I will also make a point that the person who broke this story, Jody Cantor, is a fabulous investigative reporter. She is not the, quote, court reporter. The problem is that the court reporters don't investigate and treat the court like a regular beak. They don't do investigative work. They don't press for answers. They do not treat them critically. They are so in awe of their subject matter that they act simply like the press office of the court. So more Jody Cantors, the press coverage of the court has to change. And I think the bar that goes to the court has to begin to put pressure on them as well. All right, so the details here, as confirmed by Alito, is that they were kind of in a spat with a neighbor who had some anti-Trump stuff. I think it was like an F-Trump sign, and they were upset about it. And I, I think she even called the Alito's wife the C-word. And so in, in resp Alito says his wife, in response, put up the upside-down American flag. Um, look, I am perfectly willing to say that that seems like a— disrespectful thing to do with the flag and was not a good move. And like our Supreme Court justices should model like absolutely perfect citizen behavior, whatever, if you want to be mad about it. Do, do I really care? No. But if you think that was a not a good move, that's fine. But this was the first, and I mean literally the first time I had ever even had the inkling of knowledge that apparently putting the flag upside down is a, is a stop the steal thing. And so then, so then I looked and found out probably what you found out, which is that, gosh darn it, the election denial people are not the first people to ever turn the sign upside down. In fact, you can go back to Trump's win in 2016, where you have like resistance, Hillary, Lib people doing the exact same thing, um, not in, in saying that the election was illegitimate, although they all did think the election was illegitimate because of Russia, but just because of their general frustration with the state of the country, which is probably the spirit in which Alito meant it. Um, am I missing something here? No, and I did the exact same research because I thought this is a stop the steal symbol. I had no idea. And it just turns out that some of the people who were at the January 6th riot yeah. flew the flag upside down. And it's sort of like how now they claim that the thin blue line flag is a white supremacist symbol because some neo-Nazi somewhere in some tiny protest okay flew on, right? Remember that? And the, the okay, okay sign. sign. Yeah. And uh, so the, the whole thing with the flag being flown upside down goes back to really like medieval times when you would put it up as a distress symbol. So you would hoist your flag up, and if you were being invaded or something was going on within your castle, for example, mm -hmm. you would fly the flag upside down to signal to people outside that you needed help. Um, and so some people will fly the American flag upside down to say that they believe the country is in distress. So it's not really a symbol of disrespect in that sense, um, although I think it should be reserved for obviously very serious situations that you would do that. Yeah, not like boo-hoo, my preferred presidential candidate lost. Exactly. Big mad about it. Exactly. But then when you go to the situation with Alito and the neighbors, it was that they had an F Trump sign and apparently it was like 50 feet from the school bus stop. So Mrs. Alito was upset that the kids could see the derogatory language and um, she talked to the neighbor who then put up another flag 
um, accusing her of being responsible for January 6th and then called her the C word. And so my guess is the flying of the flag upside down was to say, if this is how we treat our neighbors in this country, then our country is in distress. I highly doubt it had anything to do with signaling support for J6. Yeah, the idea this means um, that like he can't rule on those cases is to me completely insane. Um, and it's just, it's just, you know, people losing their mind. And yeah, this need to project kind of uh, the, like the iconography and the symbiology that you see all these kind of mainstream media people get into these days. Like, oh, you didn't, this icon is associated with it. That Nobody knows this. Only people are obsessed with this and then they end up sounding just as crazy and conspiratorial as the people they are, you know, supposedly trying to figure out. I mean, this was so true with like, with the okay sign, with other stuff that like, e even with, um, do you remember when, what was her name? Uh, Gina Carano got in trouble for, uh, this was the actress who was in the Star Wars show. Um, the, the Mandalorian show, and, and she's kind of like a right-wing figure now. I think she was like a COVID right-wing person. But she had this, she posted this meme of like global elites controlling everyone. And it, ha it, it is similar-ish enough to one that like people very expert and steeped in this would know is anti-Semitic. But like 96% of people who see this will go, this is just like against like elites or something. Now, was it, a, should she have, tweeted that or should that, no, it is a bad image, but like you have to be, you have to be really knowledgeable about anti-Semitism to know that's an anti-Semitic thing. So the idea that, it, but just then casually assuming that this person clearly had like anti-Jewishness in there, it was the, with the point of, of the image is, like then you're crazy if you're thinking that. Yeah, because most people don't look at things like that and immediately read like racism yeah. or hate into it. The other important part of this Alito story is the timing of it because this incident supposedly happened at the end of January of 2021. Yeah. So we're now three years on from that, three plus years on from that. If you really thought that Alito's wife flying this flag upside down was her signaling support for insurrectionists and he needed to be recused from cases or removed from the court because it's proof that he cannot rule objectively on any number of cases. Would you seriously wait three and a half years to leak this to the New York Times, which I believe was the first outlet that reported on it? Or does it maybe seem a little bit craven that they dropped this right during this presidential immunity case involving January oh, no, no, 6th? Did, did you not hear Jennifer Rubin? The, the, the court reporters, they knew about this, but they covered it up oh, to that's run right, cover that's right. for Samuel Alito <laughs> and his cronies because they're too, uh, they're too uh, bowing before the, the, the power of this institution, which, which according to Jennifer Rubin, lacks all Ill, uh, legitimacy and should be totally discarded. I, the, you know, the people who are always complaining that democracy is being eroded and that our norms are being torn down and our beloved institutions are being torn down are the same people who say, the Supreme Court should be abolished, the Electoral College should be abolished, the Senate should be abolished, like they want wholesale transformative change to immediately take place that would of course advantage like a liberal progressive worldview. But on the same hand, everyone in the other political camp doing anything at all outside their like artificial boundaries or norms is is a threat to our way of life. Yeah, and these the same people who are crying that Alito and his wife are insurrectionists or at least insurrectionists adjacent uh, are, are the ones who didn't care when a bunch of people were trying to intimidate Supreme Court justices after the Dobbs decision was leaked to get them to change their opinion on that case before they overturned Roe v. Wade. You had these uh, riots outside of their homes. You actually had one person fly across the country from, from California with the intention of assassinating uh, Brett Kavanaugh and other justices. Uh, and, and all these protests, by the way, were not protected by the First Amendment because there's a U.S. federal code that you cannot intimidate Supreme Court justices. Well, what do you mean by it? I mean, they can protest in their, they, they can't set foot on their property. They can protest in the public space, in the street, right, in front of their houses. I mean. Do I love it? No, but they can they can do that. Well, Virginia has a law that you're not allowed to demonstrate outside of Supreme Court justices' homes. I think Maryland has a similar one as well. But the federal code is pretty clear that you can't protest outside of a Supreme Court justice's home or near 
you can't basically lobby a Supreme Court justice to change their opinion, which is exactly what the intent of the protest mm -hmm. was, which was they were outside of their homes to try to intimidate them or lobby them to change the ruling on Dobbs because it hadn't been handed down yet. It was only leaked what their draft opinion was. I guess I would was. say, I don't know that that would stand up to First Amendment scrutiny, but of course it would be the Supreme Court would be the ones deciding whether it does or not, so. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, I think out. you can say that Attorney General Merrick Garland should have stepped into some extent to try to protect the Supreme Court justices. He wouldn't even give them additional security during that time when there were obviously a ton of threats on their life and they were about to go through one of the most explosive cases that has come out of the court in decades. All right, well, we're going to go turn all of our flags back right side up. More free media right after this.